of you met Brandy just a little bit earlier. She's monitoring the chat on CompuServe, and uh, um, I understand that they're, the conversation on CompuServe is going not unlike the conversation here in our studio. Yes. Um, one of the um, things that they're saying, though, is that there is a fool born every minute, and what are we to do about it? If someone wants to give money to someone like Jim Baker, then so be it. You can't control what people do. If they want to believe in him and send him money and not care what he does with the money, then that's how it should be. Um, Let's ask that question. Art Harris, I want to turn to you for that. Um, maybe not necessarily Jim Baker, but could a scandal like this happen again? You have to understand, Susan, what went wrong last time. And with Baker, he had no accountability. On paper, he had a board of directors who was supposed to oversee how he spent the money. But they were a rubber stamp board. He had people on there who would do what he wanted. So it was okay. No one said anything when he and Tammy Faye drew down $1.6 million in salaries one year, uh, bought the Rolls Royces, spent lavishly for, Rolls, for, other, for vacations and, and other things. And, and he has the power, I think, when the TV camera comes on, he is such a personality, he has the power to raise money. So unless there are people looking over his shoulder, there's always that potential, no matter how, how intent and sincere he may be. I mean, he had the power not only to get people to send in money, but to sell these books, uh, Shower of Blessings, uh, send in $1,000 and you'll get a new washing machine, whatever it is you wanted. Uh, you want a Cadillac, just remember to ask God for the color. So he had that power. I, I want to do just a quick survey of our audience. Would anybody send Jim Baker money? No. Jennifer? No. Wendy? No. John? No. Margaret? No. Margaret, you say no very emphatically. Does it make you angry when you hear some people saying, you know, absolutely forgive him, he should be able to go back, and yet, no, you wouldn't send him money? Well, I think she, he should have a job and work every day for his living. That is, by the way, part of his court order. <laughs> Getting up there, yes, absolutely. What what should he do? Well, there are plenty of jobs that he might be able to get, um, working for the city, cleaning the streets. Mm, tomorrow, how about that? <laughs> I think he definitely shouldn't be back on television as an evangelist. He may be able to serve, like some of the other people have mentioned, and his mistakes to help others with their mistakes. Okay. Stephen, do you think he would do that? A very limited ministry, very kind of self-effacing? Definitely, and it could be the prison ministry that somebody mentioned earlier in the show. I think that's a fabulous idea. If he could turn out to be like a Chuck Colson, who went from being this rotten guy to being a fabulous person who helps prisoners internationally, that would be fabulous if Jim Baker could get in that kind of ministry, and it's very possible that he could. How many people agree with Stephen on that? Barbara, what do you think? Do you, uh, do you think that would be a good idea, prison ministry? Uh, yes, I do. Do you think he would do it, Elaine? Well, I would hope so. But do you think he would? Um, it's hard to say right now. I mean, he's just barely getting out. Jim, well, we've heard an awful lot bit. about his exceptionally lavish lifestyle. Um, granted, he spent five years in prison, but, but still, with that kind of a lifestyle, do you think there's any way that somebody like that could reform? Do you, do you buy it when he says, I'm reformed, I've learned the error of my ways? No, I don't think that. But I think he should get a, a salary or an hourly wage and learn to live like a normal person. Ah, we've got a phone call from Alabama. Go ahead with your question or comment. Yeah, I want to say that um, one of the things that we forget is the sovereignty of God in the affairs of men. And so far as a second chance, I need you to think about all of the audience that in our panel listen to your breathing. You're taking a breath, and the next one could be your last. Do you deserve another breath? And so far as uh, Jim Baker, you have to understand that we sometimes, as all human beings, make our political and spiritual leaders gods, and they are not gods. You must remember that they are men, as you and I are. And God has sovereignty. He raises up. And he brings a man down when he so desires. Reverend Price, I'd like you to speak to that. I'm so encouraged. When this first happened, Jim Baker blamed Falwell and a number of other people for it happening. Now he is saying God allowed this to happen to him to bring him to where he is today. And I think that's quite commendable. Now, the God of a second chance, I believe in forgiveness totally. But we must remember that there's also the consequence of what we do. For example, David committed the sin of murder, 
and adultery and was forgiven, but he was not allowed to build the temple. Moses committed sin and was forgiven, but he wasn't allowed to go into the promised land. But they were still used in different roles. And members of the audience here today have suggested different roles. And I think Baker is now equipped for prison ministry or other such things to do a splendid ministry in that area. Okay, coming up next, what all of you would like to say, your advice to Jim Baker now that he's out of jail. Back after this. <laughs>